My name is Ahtet Mutlusara. I'm a filmmaker based in Switzerland. So what is your process? So I don't work anymore with producer. There is a type of cinema they want to have, like mainstream, a little bit in direction of Hollywood. And I don't work that way. I totally agree. I made a movie called Jealousy. Everybody always told me, you got to be 90 minutes or we can't sell it. You know, a good movie is a good movie, no matter how long it is. And I don't follow people's rules. If I like it, that's what I'm making it for. I want to make films, you know, like I want to make images. They can speak to us. So is yours more like a documentary about the artist? Fiction, documentary, essay. I think art should be just open space. Oh, I, I agree. Who's your target audience? What is it about? I don't know. I just have an idea and I want to film it. And however it turns out, if these people like it, great. If these people like it, it's not really for to define a certain thing. I I can't do that. When you have passion to do something, you can't really put it in a box. Totally. I, because art is also your own process. How I reflect the world, existence, the absence of, of yourself, it's became like your art also. The art is like... How you see it. I mean, I made also fiction, but it was also very philosophical, very mythological, very unchronological fiction. So that's why, I, I mean, I don't know what these categories are meaning, like documentary, essay, experimental, and fiction. I kind of see their other side. Like if you enter a festival, they have all these categories. How do you know where to put yours? <laughs> so what they do, in my case, they say art film. I exactly. guess that, that means everything that's not defined. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh -oh. Yeah, because art is not uh, no definition. This is absence of definition. So they say, in my case, mostly whatever I do, they say art film. So... Actually, that makes sense. And I've kind of wondered that before, too, when I saw that. Is it uh, everything else that doesn't fall in a category, throw it in the art film? <laughs> Most of the time, we get just lost in all these categories and then these work process, production process, and this pressure of commercial cinema. We get just lost. We lose our path that we don't find it. But this looking for this path is the process of art. So we get lost in this chaos because there's so much pressure. But I try now really go out from these whole, whole, whole rules and try and really make what I want to make before dying because the journey is going to end. <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> the journey going to end. <laughs> so I'm, just I'm the always... last moment to make some personal stuff I'm on before the same going. You. <laughs> you know, you don't want to die with all the ideas. You want to be able to express yourself and, you know, leave it behind. You actually took a movie to the Cannes Film Festival. What what kind of experience was that? Because that's like the biggest place you could take it. I mean, I love very much the tactful team in Cannes. At, at least in my category, it was that way. The the respect that French culture giving to art is really unique. I mean, I was very young at that time. So um, it was too much, too big to, to be on the red carpet, on the focus of the world, you know, that way. When I make films, I don't think uh, at Cannes or Rotterdam or Sundance. I even don't care. You understand what I mean? I just make it. But was there a turning point? What made you say, nah, I don't fit listening to them? The second one, the future long metrage, I made it with uh, production companies, several production companies. It was a very tiring process. I mean, it was nice, good people, good producer, but it, is, it was hard to make the film at the end. Couldn't find enough money to make it. The argument always was, this is too artistic, too philosophical, too mythological, however. The sport of uh, artists, we, we made the film, it, it went to, to Rotterdam. After that, I made just essay films, you know, very personal films. And now the new fiction uh, that we are trying to crowdfund uh, is the link. In cooperation with other artists in the world, we're going to make it. So this is some, this is my way. I'm not made to work with, with the system. Me, neither am I. I'm basically a one-man crew, and I don't really work well with others because I don't like sitting around, and if they're not doing it, I'm going to take over. <laughs> system try to give you some rules how you should make it think. So even the failure is 
interesting oh. because if artist has this failure, it is art again. The failure itself is art again. It became industry, so we have no chance to be in that industry. Yeah. Actually, I don't want to be also part of the industry. I would rather make nothing but do what I want than make money and do what I don't want to do. You know what I mean? Totally. And yeah. And but then I'm always going to be broke. To be in permanent revolt. Revolt is not be against something, but it's say yes to yourself. And I try to follow this process because I'm artist. I'm sensitive about existence. It just means more. Of course, because there is also the moment of judgment. When you finish the piece and then it's uh, leaving you, piece, art piece going to have its own life, going to become independent, fear, how... The people are going to judge you. And these fear is always there. It's going to be there. Nobody wants mm. the regret to look back and be like, if I would have done it this way, or if I would have not listened to them, it would have been better. When we do it on our own, whether it's successful or it isn't, we don't have regret. Definitely. And then, you know, also the definition of success, no? They, this is so changed, it's like storytelling. You should tell stories. They can make money. But it's not anymore about your own process as artist. So that's why we don't have Andy Warhols anymore. We don't have Yannis Mekas anymore. You understand what I mean? Or yeah. Maya Deren anymore. There's no place for us. Uh, there's no place for us, yeah. Yeah. The big ones, it's like, make the money up here, but there's mm -hmm. no place for the little guy. I know. There's and, no place for us. Well, that that's why I said, like, I, I do. You said that very well. <laughs> But that's why you I said that very, very well. This is like, look, Jimmy, this is like the historical uh, question. There is no place for us. <laughs> Unless somebody invents it or somebody can figure it out. Because I, I will tell you this. Every time I edit a movie, there is n there's always a way. Even if the movie looks like crap, there, I always find a way. Even if it seems impossible, there's always a way. Somebody needs to find a way where there is a place for us. <laughs> and hopefully they're watching this and somebody can spark an idea. This is how I can help. Any other things that you want to promote? I'm working on yeah, editing, actually. Uh, at the beginning, it was like 80 hours. Then uh, after first editing, it became 60 hours. <laughs> we have still 18 hours. The project going to call, uh, the title of the project is 18,000 Worlds. Uh, this is like um, diaries. That's not the footage, right? That's yeah. 80 hours that you were editing. Editors get numb to it from watching it over and over again. This angle, that angle, which one works the best? Absolutely, you get just tired. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I must, I, once I finish first draft, I'm going to send you. The project that you said that was like 80 hours now down and down, is is that just one project or is that like, I thought I heard you say that it's different sections or different episodes or are you actually taking footage from an 80 hour project and getting it all the way down to like an hour and a half mm -hmm. to two hour because that's in no, I, I i think it's gonna it's gonna stay at least 10 or 12 hours anyway and that's sorry gonna that's going to be one movie or is it going to be in section? Because, yes, I'm sorry. You know, in America, you don't know these things, but we know these things. <laughs> I have heard that there are like really long movies around the world. To where Absolutely. In Asia, in Asia, there are many filmmakers. They make films. They are like uh, three days. Three days. For us, it's normal to, 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 to make films that way. Wait a minute. Film it or actually it is that long? To, to actually watch it takes... That many hours? Yeah, exactly. Whoa. <laughs> I get mad when I see like a two and a half hour movie. I was like, that's way too long. But uh... this is the formatting, you know, because in USA, we don't have this format of cinema. Europe and in Asia, this tradition to make long films in the history of cinema, if you observe that, we had always filmmaker, they did, and they are still doing that. So it's okay. That's amazing. How how do they screen a movie that's like over six, seven, eight hours? How do you screen something that long? So you go in and you stay there and you live with this world of artists and 
is amazing because they don't tell you stories. Leaving something with someone. And for like five hours, you're part of their vision. And this is what they want you to see. Exactly. But that is long to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should try one. I'm gonna send you some filmmakers. You're gonna you're gonna see it. You're gonna love it. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Take care, please. Merci beaucoup.